The purpose of this video is to talk about the sodium-potassium pump. This is a particular example of active transport that takes place inside of the cell. The reason that this particular type of active transport gets its own special video during class is the sodium-potassium pump is a relatively common thing that shows up in many cells. So it's not something that is like one of the strange like, exceptions to active transport. This is one that's relatively common. Uh, the cells need to maintain a balance between sodium and potassium, especially cells like your nerve cells that are using this to transport signals. Uh, oftentimes the body is using that as a way of maintaining balance. So there's a few things you need to understand first before I go through and get into some images with you. The first thing to understand is when we're talking about sodium. The way this will be referred to in here is Na+. So this is going to use the symbol for sodium off the periodic table. The plus represents that it's actually a sodium ion. It's a charged particle. So this particular example of sodium has given up its electron. It's now a positive thing. Uh, potassium is represented with the letter K. That one is also a charged particle. So since both of these are charged, the important thing to remember about them is charged particles cannot enter and leave the cell unless they go through a protein channel. I talked to you earlier in the chapter about simple diffusion, and I said to you that there are smaller things, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, that can go directly through the phospholipids. They don't need to go through one of the protein channels to get in or out of the cell. Those things can only do that because they have two qualities. They're both very small, and they are neutral. So both of the things we're looking at here, sodium and potassium, they're both small things. We're talking about single atoms of an element. So we're talking about a very, very small thing in terms of the cell, but they are not neutral. right? If we get our special edition Mace Windu lightsaber, if, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you've got to brush up on your, on your Star Wars a little bit. Uh, but since they have that charge, right, since they have that plus up there, uh, that's representing that. That's a charged particle, so they cannot move in and out of the cell on their own. They are not neutral. So they need to go through the process, then, of active transport uh, in order to get in and out of the cell. So let's take a look at an example, and I'll show you how this process is going to work. So if you look at this picture, and we'll actually look at two different images as we start going through and, and talking about what's happening for the sodium-potassium pump. But again, keep in mind, sodium, this one is the Na+. You can see that one represented down here. And then the potassium, in the same way, this one is the K+. So if we take a look at the diagram, that one's represented out here. One of the things I like about this picture, and the reason I use this one first, is that it's a little bit more simplistic than the one I'll show you next. It is missing a few, a few important details that, uh, that I wish it had, but I'll add a few of those in as we go through this one. But I like that the sodium and the potassium are represented with different shapes. So you can see that the sodium matches up with the circular part of our protein transport here. And keep in mind, this works just like the enzymes we talked about earlier in the year, where the sodium has a particular shape that it matches up with with the larger protein. So it works with that same kind of lock and key idea, whereas the potassium does the same thing. Potassium will also line up with its own particular shape on either side. Uh, the thing that I really like about this that is being represented for you for the first time is that this process takes ATP. Uh, one of the things to mention with ATP is that it stands for adenosine triphosphate, which I'll write that one down for you. Adenosine triphosphate. The important part of that term is the tri part. So triphosphate refers to the three phosphates on the end of the ATP molecule. If you notice here, what happens is it gives up one of those phosphates. and One of those phosphates bonds to the sodium-potassium pump. That's actually what's going to provide the energy for it to move things in and out of the cell. So again, this one is an example of active transport. The energy for that active transport is coming from our ATP molecule that's giving up one of its phosphates. It's bonding to the sodium-potassium pump, and that's what's going to move things in and out of the cell. The final thing that I want to add to this, and I told you that I want to add some details on here. 
and make my pen a little bit smaller. So hopefully this still shows up pretty well. Uh, but the thing that this is missing is what's the inside and what's the outside of the cell. So over here, we have the outside in very thin writing. And down here, we have the inside of the cell. So what that means is that the sodium is being moved towards the outside. The potassium is being moved towards the inside. So the cell is getting rid of sodium through the sodium-potassium pump, and it's moving potassium onto the inside portion of the cell. We'll take a look at a second image that shows this one a little bit differently than this. It shows some more details. Overall, I think with both of them, you'll get the entire picture. So again, this is showing the same general thing as before. It's showing potassium, represented with the K+. It's, so, it's showing sodium as well, Na+. Plus. It's sending out three sodiums for every two potassiums that are coming in. You can see the two spots there for the potassiums to join up. Eventually, we get those two potassiums over here. So that's one of the things to uh, point out for this one, is how things are moving in and out of the cell. The cell is getting rid of three sodiums. There we go. Three Na plus are leaving the cell. And then you end up having two sodiums, two of those K pluses, and they enter the cell. So this does a better job of showing that. The extracellular fluid is the area outside the cell. The cytoplasm, on the other hand, down here, is the area inside of the cell. So I think this image does a pretty good job of showing that. Uh, it also shows you how this process is happening continuously. So there are examples of other little sodium molecules. Or I'm sorry, those are the purple ones are potassium. There's other little potassium molecules outside of the cell. There's also examples of sodium outside of the cell. And so this does a good job of showing that there's some outside, some inside, but none of it can move through here. It cannot move through the cell membrane. Keep in mind the, the phospholipids are a barrier that's keeping this stuff out of the cell. It also gives you examples of other sodium potassium pumps, right? Also embedded in this fluid mosaic model example of the cell membrane. So you can see some of them further away compared to the ones that are a bit closer to us. So the, uh, the final thing just to, to, stay, to uh, stick with with this one are the keys up here. We've got three sodiums that leave and there's two potassiums that enter the cell for every single one of the ATPs that are used to run this process. So one ATP uh, takes the point of, of running all of that. So just to recap a few of the major things, we have our sodium and our potassium. They cannot go through the membrane. because they are positive, because they are charged molecules. So things that are negative either couldn't go through. So instead, they're moved in and out of the cell through the process of active transport. Remember, active transport requires the use of ATP, which is broken down and ends up giving off one of those phosphates. The final thing then to get down from this one is that the sodium that is moved out of the cell and then our potassium that is moved into the cell. There's two of those that are moved and then there's three of the sodium. So this creates an imbalance, right? It's trying to get rid of more sodium and bring in more potassium. So by running this, it's going to send more sodium out of the cell and bring more of that potassium on inside. So overall, I hope that this does a pretty good job of explaining the process for you with the sodium and the potassium pump. It's just sort of an extension off of what we've already talked about with some of the concepts with active transport. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.